that it, okay so it's recording <laughs> got it good all right all right so i'm going to throw my little spiel of intro in and maybe you want to do the same thing if you're going to be releasing it as well but i'm going to start with uh this is peter and anacola with spiritual therapies with peter and anacola for a change because she hardly ever cuts on these videos and i'm today uh, interviewing Lucy Davis, one of the stars of the recent Charlie Ward um, convention slash meet and greet in Birmingham, Birmingham, United Kingdom. Oh, I just love this gal. I mean, you're, you're just great. I mean, the, the whole idea that you stepped away from the from the big business and and that that money market thing that really speaks to me. I hope we get to talk about that. But we're going to talk about whatever Lucy wants to talk about. Take it away, Lucy. Oh, bless you. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for inviting me on here, Peter. Really appreciate it. And Anna, so lovely to meet you because I heard so much about you in uh, Birmingham. So it, it's just really beautiful to actually be able to see you and get, get the opportunity to speak to you. So thank you both for having me here. To my followers. Um, these two are absolutely amazing souls. I'm looking forward to this conversation to just navigate in whichever way. My followers know me so well. It's always intuitive wherever it ends up. It's not where I anticipate it to. So um, I think if we just start with, you know, what, what you would, would like to cover, Peter, and that is, you know, kind of the background and, and how we stepped out of that, that world yep. and then see where it navigates from there, probably. Okay. You want me to start with that? Okay. Okay, um, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah. So um, I've been a medical practitioner for 35 years, and um, and Anu also was to a degree a uh, sort of medical practitioner. Although she worked in the in the Pilates industry, she's a professional dancer um, and women's empowerment. And she would use the Pilates as a, a venue in which to facilitate women's empowerment type discussions and help them. And, and when we got married, um, it kind of spurred this um spiritual growth and um you know i really i have her to thank for all of the things i started writing i started doing all the different things and mainly what was happening was uh, probably about 12 14 years ago i started putting god back into the medical scenario and that's when i realized the amount of deceit and lies and darkness that leads a lot of the medical scenario uh uh, area that I happen to be working. I work in medicine, obviously. And I, the more I, I tried to bring truths and help people see the truth, even in the healing situation, the more I basically was attacked, the more I was ostracized, the more I was slandered and even attempts on my life. And when I finally married Anna, it gave me the courage to, be, to, to not hide on the one-on-one -on -one anymore and to really step out publicly to expose what was going on and that meant i really had to just step almost completely away from uh, medicine from relying on the system for payment and for a, a, a livelihood in medicine i could still help people and i do that's what i do i help now people more in the area of ascension you know, a lot of people hear about Ascension, but they don't really know how to get there. You know, how do how, and I give them very, just like I did with therapy and healing, I give them systematic steps in how to achieve and how to climb the old Ascension uh, ladder, as it were. And, it, it, and, and that helps for people who are just starting. And it also talks, helps with people who've already gone up into the fifth dimension and they, they might want to go a little further or what is it, how do I stay there? How do I keep, you know, how do I remain there? And that's that's what I do. And that's what I was doing when I was talking with people in uh, Birmingham. And that's how I met uh, the wonderful David Ian and uh, uh, Elise. And we actually, we ended up sitting next to each other during the dinner and that's all we did was talk. I mean, the whole table sitting there watching, you know, <laughs> and we were sitting <laughs> chatting about healing, you know, between David and myself and, and Elise and her music. And it's like, it was pretty powerful, very powerful. Very you. much so. So, Anna, what's what's your story? I appreciate Peter's just shared a little bit about the Pilates stuff, but you know, you must have had to break out of that mold as well at some point. So, <clears throat> Pilates is just a little part of my story. Um, you know, I uh, I see it as those beautiful souls now meeting up together on this journey to this new earth. We're coming from all different directions, breaking out of this system, seeing the cracks in it. And 
uh, that's why I'm I'm so grateful uh, to to meet my family. This is basically my my new family. Uh, you also like I, I hear your story. Uh, I was listening to some videos uh, from you now, and I hear that you broke up of this system of banking, and uh, we're speaking the same language. You know, it's like um, I had the same journey growing up in the communistic country. Uh, being very suppressed, uh, being a victim uh, of the system, of, uh, of all the constructs. And, um, you know, life put me through a lot of challenges, especially through the relationships, a lot of broken uh, heart uh, on my journey. And uh, first I was focusing on what is, what is going wrong in my life until I realized through years and years of self-work, of learning how to love myself, that there were the gifts. Every dramatic situation in my life that happened before, uh, let me grow, let me realize something. Uh, let me uh, point at that I, I didn't love myself, I didn't love, I didn't respect myself enough. So I see it as a gift. And that's why I feel such a connection with you when I was listening to the way you talk about gratitude, about learning self-love. Self um, so thank you. Thank you for connecting. Yeah, you know, I, I knew when, that you were the first person I talked with at that show. Of yes. all the people yes. about wanting to have another meeting. And it was really because I knew that you and my wife, Anna, would really connect. At least I knew that she would want to connect with you. And and so that's why I was I was insistent, you know, about like, hey, let's let's set up something. <laughs> anyway. well, what's quite fascinating, Anna, is um one of my brands is called Self Love Club. And it's because of in 2013, 2014, I had a physical breakdown. Um, you know, I, I burnt out very badly whilst working on the trading floor for investment banks. And that was my reminder that I had to get out of those systems. You know, I had to do it. And a bit like both of your journeys, you know, being restricted, being held, being consumed, you know, it's all the addictions that you get off the back of it that you don't even realise, consumerism, you know, drinking, partying, uh, having to be around people constantly. And, and these are addictions that people wouldn't even know are addictions. And I started to recognise all of that because I had to take the time out. And that's when I recognised that I absolutely hated myself and I didn't realise it. Yes, the, the world, the world, is, that's, that. the world wants us to hate ourselves. They, they actually, that's the reason competition mentality is put into you. You're never enough. You can never get there. It's you're all, you're always looking at this winning line on the end of this like long of this race that they put us in from even from the time we were little kids. It's always competition, competition against other kids. And, and you can never win the race because the minute you become the best in this class, you move on to the next class and then you start all over again. And it's, it's, it's horrible. And whatever, you, and whatever you've got, you're told that you should have the other. So a really yeah. good example is, you know, if you're blonde, you want to be brunette. If you're brunette, you want to be blonde. Do you get what I mean? It's just this, con if you've got fair skin, you want olive skin. You know, we've got this constant battle about, yeah. well, because I haven't got that, I want that. You know, and, and that's all part of the system. It's all part of the matrix, you know, yeah. but a lot of people out there, I mean, my, my followers get it, right? My followers choose to follow me because they, they've they watched me break through from, you know, the, the lowest depths and they've, they've watched me ascend on my journey. However, there are still a lot of people out there that don't get that the systems are there to disrupt us. They're, they're not there to help us like a lot of people believe that they are, you know, yeah. and, and it's, and it's just about navigating that in your own time and recognizing it when, when you're ready to do it. But, you know, this happened to me in 2013, 2014. And then I literally went on a rocket of ascension and I've never been the same since. <laughs> not I, not at all. To appreciate the darkness in your life. Yeah. You need it. You need to go down. You need to break, to break out of it. You know, so yeah. th that's the beauty of this journey. Yeah. I'm grateful for all my bad relationships, for all those guys cheating on me. Without yeah. this, I wouldn't yeah. be here. 
Yeah, and, you and, know? and how that just varies just slightly with what I do is not that it's different, but I was, I was a therapist. I help people get healthy. So now God has shown me, well, the reason I let you have contact with that, I calculated it up one time. I, I saw, I've seen over a quarter of a million souls that I have actually touched, you know? And so, but he said, that was for you to learn so that you could help now others also in a therapeutic sort of spiritual therapist kind of at way to, so they can also achieve the same thing you know instead of just presenting hey here's here's what an ascended person looks like which is a lot of people do a lot of the ascended they will do that like, hey look at me you know not that that's a bad thing but there is also you know sometimes people need a little help in the form of a sort of therapy a, a sort of instruction a protocol on how do i get there how do i get to where you are you know i see it but i want to know how do i get there and so that that's kind of what i do <laughs> so anyway thank yeah, you it's well that that's that's the that's the fascinating bit about it right is that everybody has their own path and 99 percent of the human race believe that their traumas or their, you know, the, the things that have gone wrong in their life have actually been to hold them back. When in reality, yes. it's their it's their lessons, it's their reminders, it's their gifts. But because of victim mode and because of you know the way that we've been mind controlled, people don't quite get that. And it's and for me, that's the gold in it. When you actually look at it and you're like, oh my god, yes, I had to have that tumor because yeah. if I hadn't had that tumor then this wouldn't have happened and that wouldn't have happened you yeah. know and and I I personally um have healed from tumors in 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 the womb you know and that is a huge 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 shift for anybody you know that it's there's no limitation on who can heal but you know as a medical practitioner I've heard it all everybody that comes in says that yeah I understand I can you can help me with my knee but you don't know what I've done they always believe that they have done, they've been in a place that is beyond forgiveness, beyond help. That it, and everybody's story is the same. You know, whether it's child abuse, rape, um, physical abuse, overuse, addiction, it doesn't matter because for them in their world, it was enough to bring them to death. And what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. That is not something that is sometimes, it's all the time. It's a, it's a, it's one of those golden rules. Like you turn on the light, the darkness flees. Those things are created by God, and and you cannot deny that. The only one who can deny it is yourself. If you say no, it doesn't apply to me, then it won't. But it, but once you take that into your hands and say, okay, I hear you. I hear that, and I'm ascended, and I hear that that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. But then you hear now you get the story. But I was, I was taken in a tunnel and I was sexually abused by a satanic. On a, I was actually on the altar, you know. How did that make me stronger? That's where you, you, that's where we people like us come in and say, listen, those kind of just like Anna saying. Once you realize that, yes, the abuse is horrible, and you you're not you're not saying that it was God even wanted it. No, He allowed it. He allows it because we have free will. Those people had free will. And so then somebody, somebody, this person, this child lives through that situation and they become stronger. How? Now they can help others in that trauma in their life in the past. Look at me now. You know, look at look what's going on. I'm happy, free. I could create anything in this universe. I'm ascended, which is part of the gifts. I can help you, even if you were sexually abused as a child. I know I've been there. God, God allowed me to live through that, so I can now be someone who can help others in that situation. Like you're helping others in the things that you're doing, you know, Lucy. Millions around the world, and Anna's helped thousands of women, thousands of them, you know, come through these traumas in their life because she'd been there. She had lived through it. Thank God that gave her the muscles, the spiritual muscles now to help others, to help lift them up out of their problems. They need, you need those muscles. Yeah, for sure. It's, 
pe people are under the illusion that everything is happening to them rather than for them. Yeah. You know? And, and you, you know, like me, pre-2013, Anna, I'm sure you can relate to it as well. Like pre, pre a certain point in your life, like I was the victim. You know, yes. I'll, I'll never forget every time I had, you, you know, I had to go to hospital because I had chronic digestive issues or I had issues with my womb or my hair was falling out, my thyroid, you name it. My body was constantly communicating with me. Lucy, like I'm trying to get your attention. You're not using yes. your voice. You've got this, you've got that. You're not doing this, you're not doing that. But I was oblivious oblivious and that's a massive part of the work that I do is bring that up into consciousness and and explain to people look if you're losing your voice if you're getting tonsillitis this is what it is you know this is a guidance as to what it could be if it's in your womb area if it's in like it's a very important your body is constantly talking to you and it doesn't have to be a physical reason why your physical body is talking to you it could be spiritual emotional you name it, it could be anything and Lucy but, uh and, and that, you just said, Lucy, and not to interrupt you, but one, on just what you just said, one of the things that I've learned as a medical practitioner, okay, is that the attack, that the things, we don't get these things, they don't come in us, they come at us. They're 99.9999% spiritual. Physical, they're just so small. I mean, they're actually so they're so in, in they're so insignificant that they're almost un, you know your your body could easily clean them up. But it's because we believe that they're coming in us that we actually invite them in, and and that is one of the things that we have to learn as ascended beings that this that we have a lot of control over it and we don't we never become alcoholics we are attacked we're attacked with alcoholism we're attacked we get heart attacks we come down with the cold or we come down it pushes us down we are we 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 catch the cold that's the way it used to be taught 30 years ago it was taught that way because that's the truth and then they changed it they changed it about it right around the right around the 70s and 80s. They started changing the way they were teaching people in school and started saying, no, 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 no. You are, you know, you have to start, you, you'd go to the doctor to find out what you have. Okay. You don't have anything. You, you're attacked. And the minute you see it as an attack, instead of something that's in you, it makes it easy for you to fight, fight with your words, fight with your beliefs. You know. And also uh, change the approach that, uh, you know, your body reacts to those attacks with certain conditions. Take it as information. Yeah, that's what she's saying. It is exactly yeah. right. What you're saying is absolutely right. What is it trying to tell you? Yeah. Because it does tell you things. But we didn't see it before. Yeah. Before you understand it, you just, you know, I, I hear sometimes people uh, walking uh, up the stairs and cursing their own knee oh my damn knee is hurting me so much no yeah so you know i saw this <laughs> one time and i say no be grateful for your knee your knee is is giving you an information you know that something maybe maybe you walk wrong direction maybe you need to change something in your life but it took me years lucy to understand this yeah. you know that every everything that is happening to me is for me it's not to me, it's for me. Not to you, for yeah. you. Yeah. And it, it, it's not going uh, to go away before I get the lesson from yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so. Exactly. And that's what, and also people, you know, pain is one of my issues that I have the biggest problem with it. And it's actually the reason I got, I was kind of discovered by, you know, Nino Rodriguez, because he was complaining about pain in his back. You know, I wish somebody would take this pain away from me. God will never take away something that is for your good. Pain is your is your warning system. It's a system that's telling you attack is either imminent or it's happening to you right this second. So to to tell the to ask God to take away pain is like asking God to take the fire alarms out of your house when they're going off. No, you, you need those fire alarms to tell you. But the minute you are aware where the pain is coming from and where, why and what's setting it off and why then it, it's done its job you've honored the system and then the system i've seen people with pain 
issues for years and years. The minute they see that it's an attack instead of it's something that has been just pestery that they have, shuts off just like that. It literally goes away because you've honored, finally, you've, you've learned what the fire alarm is trying to say. You go up, you reset it, you start looking for the fire, put away the smoke, get return, take the pan of sausages off your off your stove and you that's burning, and you realize and it turns off. It doesn't need to go on again. And that's it's as simple as that with these systems. When we ignore them, or we even do worse, we go to the doctor and he says, Take this medicine, take it, take it, take it. He's telling us to take this irritation. And it's like that's the that's the flaw of the system they want us to take these attacks they want us they're doing it for you know the, did you know that 99 percent of the issues that people suffer from are caused by the medication they take the doctors yeah. know this the good doctors know this i've had doctors back in 30 years ago tell me not to take blood pressure medicine even though i'm kind of an intense guy as you can see my wife has to constantly calm me down. And she, and it's like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but she, you know, 99, so what does that mean, Peter? Well, I had this doctor friend, he was a good friend of mine, and my wife had, my first wife had just died, although she was, I now know that she was taken by satanic ritual abuse and killed, but that's a different story for another time. And, oh, by the way, they will pay. Um, but anyways, the... Um, He's, I had stress, as, as you, would, you would think. You know, you lost your wife and 10-month-old unborn child. That rooster is going to get it. I'm <laughs> and, and, the, uh, um, and, he's, and he said, this doctor said, well, your blood pressure is elevated. And, uh, it might have something to do with the fact that you're slugging down, um, et cetera, and then you're not sleeping. But, okay, he, he said, slow down on the coffee and the, and the uh, Mountain Dew drinking. And uh, and we'll, I shouldn't plug those products, but that, and um, and and start. Maybe I should. I, I said, well, what about just giving me a blood pressure pill? Yeah, he says, I'm not a big fan of that. He said because everybody I put on blood pressure medicine, they end up getting cholesterol, and you've got perfect cholesterol levels. He said, and then he said, then they then they get on cholesterol medicine, and they get hypolipidemia. Then I got to put them on that medicine, and then they got to then they've suddenly developed diabetes, and I got to put them on anti-diabetic uh, medicine, and it's like one causes the other, causes the other, causes the other. He said everybody that I do this with, they end up in that scenario, and I had another doctor, pain. He says I don't prescribe pain medication to anybody, anybody if they can get away with CBD or other things. He said because the pain pills cause depression. The depression pills cause anxiety. The anti-anxiety, they cause sleeplessness. Sleeping pills cause, when in combination with the four, suicidal thoughts. They want to kill themselves. All of the patients, not some, all, when they have those medicines. And you know that, that it is horrible, but those medicines have been synthesized to do that. You get this little bit of herb that they copy. They don't put it actually in the pill that does that thing that they want to do, bring down your blood pressure. And that, that little milligram, uh, like two or three milligrams of, let's say, um, blood pressure medicine. You know how much a milligram is for your readers? The, you take a drop of water at sea water and you put it on your finger and it drops. That drop is one gram. Everybody, it's always the same. One drop of water is a gram. A milligram is one thousandth of a gram. That means a thousandth of a drop. A microgram is one thousandth of that one thousandth. Most medicines are in micrograms. So you're getting a thousandth of a thousandth of, or of a millionth of a, of a drop. And the rest of that big old pill that you're taking is what they want to deliver. Okay, that the, 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 what you're getting that little bit of relief and a lot of what they want. And that's why medicines are horrible.
That's it's just a loop, about. isn't it? Yeah. It's just a constant yeah. loop that people are in with it, you know? Yeah. And, and I was in that loop, you know, I was on yeah. um, Nexium, you know, Omeprazole, all kinds of things like that for my digestive system. Then there was lots of different things that I had to take for my womb. Honestly, it was, it, when I look back now, the cycle, I'm surprised I lasted as long as I did before I burnt out. And thank God I burnt out because as soon as that happened, I've never taken a medical pill. Actually, that's a lie. I have taken a medical pill once, but just so that I got discharged from the hospital. <laughs> they, they, don't want you to burn up. they don't want you to burn out. They See, medicine causes also all the, all the psycho, psycho drugs cause people to become depressed. It depresses you below 3D. They don't want you to burn out. They want to use you and use you in the system to be their slave and to work, 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 be and be and and be and also you got to give all your finances to the pharmaceutical. It's all part of control to suck you down to this little little gerbil that's like a skeleton. And then when you've had, when you're just about done and you're ready to give up on humanity, on life, then they're like, okay, then they'll let you die. But you know, Lucy, this is the whole construct that, that they created. Uh, people are so busy in this system. Like before you burn down, you were in the bank, you say. Yeah. You know? No, she was uh, in the stock market. Yeah. But if you're so busy with, with life, with, uh, you know, managing everything, paying your taxes, paying your bills, uh, you don't have time to reflect on what's going on with you, really. Mm -hmm. If your body brings information or not. No, you go to the doctor, you, you're going to get the pill. And that's the design, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so I, thank God for those aware, awakened doctors, for those people like you, you know, that bring this information with different language to different people because everybody needs, needs some different inf information so we can reflect of changing the perception about life right now. Because there are so many good people right now trapped in this yeah, I, human yeah, system. It's, it, this is an interesting topic for me, right? Because I truly believe that everybody is divinely placed. So I was divinely placed in the investment banking world so that I could be the light. I could see what was going on, knowing that I was going to break free. Likewise, Peter in the yeah. medical industry. I but the minute you try to do that, the minute you try to do that, they, they, the system, they, oh my God, I don't know about you, but they, oh, they. No, they, but my, my point, my point is, my point is that there are people that are still in these environments now that are like us, but they're in there because we need them to be there. You and I were too strong for them to deal with us being in there. We're, we're too yeah. stubborn, we're too outspoken, but there are people in there that we need to be in there so that we can infiltrate them from the inside out. This is, a, from yeah. my perspective, that's what we need. Now, a lot of people, and I think this is where you were going with this, Anna, a lot of people are staying there because of the money. Oh, yeah. They're staying right. there because their mortgage needs to be paid or yeah. their kids are at school or, you know, whatever, whatever commitments they've got. And, and most people are focused on that. Yeah. Uh, they are exhausted. So it, also. They, they, can't, they don't have any space in their life, you know, managing the kids, the jobs, the, the bills, you know, they. Yeah. Uh, Especially single women. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine, yeah. you know, because the it's, whole world. It's interesting. Is it's yeah. interesting you say that, Peter, because when I lived in London, it was like I was on a roundabout, a constant roundabout. I would go to work at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, ready for the markets to open. I would finish work anywhere between six, seven, eight, 12 at night, two in the morning, that kind of thing. And any nights that I was out of the door by about seven or eight, I'd be in the bar having yeah. drinks with my friends and then I'd be getting the train home I'd and then relax. I'd actually be going to bed get back and doing it again. And it's, oh. And it's trying just... to numb your emotions also because sometimes you have those glimpses yeah. of understanding, like what am I doing? But then you just go yeah. party. Okay, let's have a the drink. Alcohol let's depresses. Let's forget, the you know? alcohol yeah. depresses your exactly. Exactly. And all, drugs and alcohol pull you below. I had a very interesting discussion. I don't know if you saw that my last video with uh with Elise and, and David about yeah. the dimensions. When people are pulled below three or th when they're stuck in three which is surface area, the surface of the, of this, of the, or below, they have the inability to access the spiritual. Okay. That's why it's also hard for us as 
people that are in the 5D to go and talk to people who are in the 3D because they, it sucks you down because they're they're talking about what's going on here in 3D. And, and when you go to the bar to try to relax, oh, you will relax, all right. You drink alcohol and it pulls you even further and your ability then to access 5D diminishes. You know, let and, the cat and, and let the cat in. Our cat, we start just started letting him <laughs> off. And, and this, this good, but we have coyotes. What's, what's we have coyotes in the area, so you know he could be food. What's, what's quite interesting at the moment is there's a lot of people that are um, stepping back into alcohol and drug addiction. You know, a lot of my clients at the moment are um, alcoholics or um, drug addicts in recovery, but they've actually slipped back into taking drugs and stuff. I'm really seeing that as a massive shift at the moment. And it's because this heaviness and then on top of it, the energies that we've got going on, people just aren't coping. And unfortunately, they've been programmed to think that them doing a line of coke at the weekend or having a bottle of wine on a Friday night is, is a form of release, whereas actually it's a form of suppressant. Exactly. You know, and I'm you, 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 you can you can do those things, but you've got to do them. Not I, I, I would say not the cocaine, but but, you know, what, drinking a glass of wine at, that is does have a physical effect of, you know, one glass, two glass. It does lower your it does lower your stress levels. It does lower a phys it has a physical effect of relaxation on your body. OK, so that's what they're feeling. And that's why they're convinced that that helps. But at the same time, you know, if you're a dweller of 5D, you quickly realize that drinking too much does have this depressive level to you. If you drink it, a, a, you know, eating a, any, even a food that, uh, that allows you to, that allows your body to relax, you know, because here, you know, here we are, you know, here we are practitioners of, of spirituality. We are, all three of us, you know, and, you, but then you run into somebody, you know, and you have to talk about the things that are going on in the world, you know, the lies, that are going on and they're talking about oh my god what am i gonna do biden is getting ready to invade ukraine you know and and, and then you have to explain to them about what's going on in the world the lies that they're bringing to the table and so mm -hmm. it causes you to get when you talk about child's talk about that stuff when you talk about people being duped into getting this you know and they're and they're being lied to and it, it gets you it gets you tense people cannot handle these emotions anymore you know like like you say that you see this loop coming back now like people who well, what i wanted to finish real quick Sorry. let me finish this point okay is it causes even us to get tense because we're talking about you know issues that are affecting the world you know each other and all that sort of thing so it causes a thing sorry real quick let me just finish this point it caused so it's okay for us to get tense about that, but we too have to be able to relax, you know, in, and, and when you, re, you, when you relax in your body, you can do it in, in one of many ways, you know, you don't have to go to alcohol, but if you choose to, and you use that, you, you use it with the knowledge, with the, with the increased knowledge of what you're trying to, what you're trying to do with it. You want to relax your body, but you don't want to relax your spirit. Okay. And knowing it has an effect on you, that releases your vulnerability to the effects of the curse that's behind alcohol. There's a curse that's behind that. So when you know that you're no longer going to be a victim of that because you understand how it works. It makes it then easier to not become a victim of it. And you're not going to have, you know, you can go out, Lucy, and you can have a comfortable drink without worrying about the, the, the attack of the, the alcohol attack hitting you instead of living in fear. Like I know some people that are recovered alcoholics and they live in fear. I can't even go near a drink. Oh, they give too much power. I'm not telling them to go drink. You know, they, they also know their weaknesses and they should stay away from the things that they're vulnerable for. But at the same time, don't be living in fear 
of stuff, you know, that, you know, like you said, you know, you're, you were working in that financial institution. You got driven out of it. So did I out of the medical scenario, but there are people in there that they can still function when they realize that they, they are powerful and they can function within it. Um, God and God wants to use them while they're still in it to find others and help others. Then, you know, take power over that, that fear. Don't, don't be afraid of it. That's the try, try, point I'm trying to make. And what were you going to say, honey? Okay. What were you going to say, Anna? I'm hitting. <laughs> you were, you, you were. No, just... I, I, I was, uh, uh, I was saying that I see this pattern, uh, like you were talking about, Lucy, that a lot of people who were like, uh, even in this um, awakened people who were spiritual and like very positive and focusing on gratitude, and they were hit by this information about all this darkness. I didn't know about it before. You know, you you hear some things, but you you really you don't realize that it is uh, it is truth. So when I was hit by this information in 2020 of what's really going on in the world, I went down also. I, I felt so overwhelmed. And, uh, you know, people even were talking to me. You used to be so positive, always talking about good things. about, And now all of a sudden you talk about this darkness. But you have to acknowledge it. You cannot numb it out, push it away, take the alcohol. Uh, you know, alcohol co is called the spirit. It's, it, you know, spirit, not without the reason. It's, it's like, you know, when you're not, not aware of this, it opens the door for some darkness to come in and, yeah. you know, and. But once you're aware you. of it, then you're putting the light on the truth. Yeah. See, people don't realize that we have so much potential power given to us by God. And, and that's the light. You know, it doesn't say for nothing that I will dwell in you, but you have to choose it. You have to ask for that. You have to, re you have to be willing to receive it. He will not force himself on anybody, but if we willingly receive the gifts of God, he'll give them to you. And then, and the more you, you receive, the more he gives. It's, it's amazing how God works. It's like, he's like this father who just sits there and watches his child play. You know, he leaves the child play, even if the child is going to inadvertently try to stand up before they're ready and fall on their butt and get hurt. He doesn't go and lift them and uh, let me help you. No, no. He lets them learn. Okay. He's so loving. But when they're learning and they're and they and they come back and they go and they present it back to God. Look what I found. Oh, you talk about wanting to please God. I know this from experience. God showed me this when I was writing. He said, you want to see what it looks like? What I see when I watch my people learn? And he showed me this. He showed me my daughter. He gave me a glimpse of years ago, probably 20 years ago. And I see this baby sitting on, a, on, a, on the ground. And she's, I can see her from behind, but I can also see her from the front at the same time. And I can see myself sitting there watching her on the couch. So if you can imagine this, and she's like this, hmm, hmm, hmm. She's moving something in her hand and she's making that little cooing sound, hmm, like she's discovering. And then I look and I can see her face and she got this smile, this gentle, inquisitive, but happy smile as she turns this simple block, this little wooden block over, and she looks at the picture on one side, and then the letter on the other, and then the picture, and then she keeps looking back and forth. And she's, and I look at my own self sitting on the couch watching, and I've got this look on my face of complete bliss. Like I am just, there's no other place in the world I would rather be than sitting there watching her. Peace, love, joy. That's on my face. And she's going back. And then finally she goes. And she holds it out. No, first she looks up. Is he watching me? Is he still there? 
and I'm there. And she gets this little smile. And then she goes back to doing what she's doing. And then she holds it up. And I tell you, even to think about that image now brings tears to my eyes. Because the baby is saying, look what I've discovered. Look what I've discovered. And for me, sitting on the couch, that is like, wow, life. She's discovering life and she's presenting it to me. And I'm like, then I look, I'm sitting on the couch and I go, that's nice. And then she takes it back and starts looking at it again. That's the image. And you know, it's, a, it's an image of our father, God, the creator, watching us, constantly watching us and loving us, loving us discover life, you know? And, and then when we turn around and acknowledge it back to him, it's like we're giving it back to him. You know, what better, I mean, you cannot give a greater gift to a father, and I know this from experience, than the child saying, here, look what I've discovered. You have a son who discovers life and comes and tells us about it. And it's like, wow, thank you, you know? Yeah, that's why creator gave us, uh, God gave us free will. Mm -hmm. We have to make those mistakes. We have to learn those lessons, go through the and, darkness. And then have a power. Remember the power that we've got because yeah. so many people have forgotten, you know, because they're not good enough. They're not skinny enough. They're not pretty enough. They're not fast enough. They're not intelligent enough. We've forgotten that actually none of that matters. That's just the system we're living in right yeah. now. And actually, all of us are very intuitive, very psychic, able to use telepathy, like all of these gifts that are coming back online for a lot of people right now. And, and that is the ultimate power. Like that is the ultimate power. That's, that's about us reclaiming our sovereignty is bringing all those gifts back online, which is what people are doing right now, which is incredible. Yeah. Hey, I, want, I have a specific question real quick. I didn't mean to cut you off, honey. So if you have a point you want to say, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. No, say No, no, it's okay. Okay. I had a question that, so you have, you know, you stepped out of the financial realm. You know, it's, it's easy for me to relate to people stepping out of the medical, because I know how they can step out, step away from pharmaceuticals, step more into a natural type treatments to facilitate healing, look to God, et cetera. But I'm still very, you know, we've also stepped away from financial dependency. But to be honest, I'm not even sure how that really works. And I really like you to, if you had, if we still have some time to explain to my audience or your audience too, what was that like stepping away? And what is it like now? How is it different than what you were before? How is that in the financial realm? You mind me yeah. asking? Okay. So um, it was bloody scary is the answer. You know, I had mortgage, I had cars, I, you name it. I had the big long list of things that you have when you're caught up in that very material world. Um, but at the time when I originally quit, so what, what I actually did is I burnt out. I had to, I had to go off. Um, I took 14 months off work and then I went back for, I promised myself no more than two years. And I actually did 23 months. And then I, I left for good. So the first time round, it was a case of I'm going to make it work. You know, I had savings, that kind of thing. Not a problem at all. When I went back um, to the financial industry, because what you've got to remember is that's all I had done. I went to university and studied it. I went straight into work and I worked for 15 years in this environment before my physical burnt out. So I knew nothing else, nothing at all. Same so I me. took yeah I took 14 months off but on that 14 months off I started to heal my body so um just to give a little bit of backstory I've alluded to it earlier but I um from the age of 20 I had fibroids polyps um tumors that grew in the womb um thyroid issue uh, digestive issues you name it I had it all going on I had recurring tonsillitis laryngitis bronchitis every month I was on antibiotics so I was quite a sick person before uh, that, between about to, real, real quick for my medical before that did you have anti-stress or any kind of pills that you were taking prior to those things 
No, I no. So literally all of this started at about 20 when I was putting myself under stress with university and study and then work and whatever. Um, but prior to that, I was a happy go lucky kid. Do you get what I mean? I, I was, yeah. you know, always outdoors, always horse riding, you know, all of those things. And then life became very, very serious. And that's when my physical body was like, hello, you're not doing, you're not on your path. No. You're not remembering. I was, very, I was a very awake <laughs> child. Chill. Yeah. yeah, I was a very awake child. And then at about 10 or 11, I switched it off. Like literally our exams became important and, you know, fun wasn't important anymore. So of course my body took about 10 years to start communicating with me look you know what are you doing and and I'll be really open and honest I, I am anyway but I, I took drugs I drank a lot of alcohol you know through studying through particularly through my years of working in London like I was a party girl you know I would go out on a Thursday night come home on a Sunday night do you get what yeah. I mean like I was yeah. a party girl and, I, and I'm not embarrassed to, to say it because it's shaped me the person I am today and everybody that comes to me with drug addiction alcoholism something like that it's because they but know I, that I've been there yeah yeah you know like so I, I didn't do myself any favors I guess is what I'm saying at this point however it started at 20 20 years of age when you know everyone can handle alcohol and stuff but that's when it started so obviously um there were there were signs and there was you know physical communication that I was missing at that point so fast forward to 35 that's when I had my burnout and you know I was a broken soul I was a, I was a complete broken soul within about three months of being away um because what I did is I took time off and literally left the country I was like if I'm going to be sick I'm going to go and be sick somewhere hot and I, and I just went and did some traveling and it was on my travels, meeting different people and being introduced and everywhere I would go, I would meet an incredible healer or everywhere I would go, I would meet somebody and I'd be like, I wonder what this person, you know, what, I wonder why I've met this person. And within about six, eight months, I had really ignited this passion around healing. And I had decided that I was going to qualify to become a nutritionist because I was passionate about food. And I, in in the lucy three-dimensional uh you know sphere at that time i was like it's got to be food everything is healed by food which obviously it's is true. a massive part of it but it's not it's you it's know not, it's, not, it's, it's not everything it's just one of many things if there's yeah, so many ways exactly. to you can be healed literally in every direction you look around because god he he is obligated to basically put his essence in everything that we see, in every part of our creation, including every person that we see. There's a piece of God in, in all of us. We know that. But it's like going up the stairs. First, you get the first step of nutrition, and it, it already opened you up yeah. to, to the healing. You, you are not exactly. ready for the next step. You know, you couldn't understand. Yeah. Like, you couldn't understand some books that you read before. And now you're all of a sudden, no. you know? Exactly. And what was so fascinating is I decided to do a nutrition degree about a year into it. I'm like, what am I doing? This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Because obviously I was getting all of the spiritual downloads and I was, everything else was kicking in at that point. But that's by the by. I, ba I basically started in that route. Um, so like going on to the next bit, I was away for 14 months. I went back to the trading floor because I was qualifying as a nutritionist and I had a path out of it. But I knew that I had to go back and, you know, and, and, get some cash and do whatever right. so I went back for two years with the view of becoming a nutritionist when I got out the other side of it but by the time I'd finished my nutrition I was like I don't believe in anything that they've just taught me you know I don't agree yeah. with dairy I don't agree with this I don't agree with that so why am I you're right you know? all, you're compromised all of those yeah. systems are compromised you're right exactly so so it, but but it was such an amazing experience because I was like right I now know what I don't want to do and I started coaching people at that point. I actually started doing seminars. So I worked for UBS Investment Bank and they used to let me do a seminar once a month in their auditorium. So I'd have about two, 300 people come along and I would educate them on, you know, how to move their body when they're at work, you know, rather than, because most of us were tied to our desks all day. And I was like, right, this is the way you do exercise. These are the kind of food options you can get when you, you, you know, you can't get out and you can't Beautiful. do much. So I started educating these people, changed the whole dynamic 
ended up leaving and they actually employed me to go around and speak to all of their offices to nice. like raise the consciousness on how they looked after themselves. Yeah. So that was a huge, like, you know, these, these environments can work together is what, what I realized yeah. back then. So you, you never then really, you, did you, but did, were you still, did you ever pull completely out of the financial scenario or were you still kind of working for them? That, that's what you're saying. Or you, you're not. No, today. no, 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 no. No, 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 I don't, I haven't worked with them since, um, so in 2017, I like quit properly, they then employed me through October and November to do a tour of their offices, after that I've never worked with the financial industry since, mm. I've and worked yet, completely, and yet, and, and yet God still is providing you with oh, Apple, God. Apple, yeah i know more than yeah, you we more. don't know how how it happens but it's always happening you yeah. know you think that you lost everything that there is no way out and the way is coming you know when you start yeah. to open up to this you know to god to universe to you know to, to this possibility and you have faith it's happening yeah, yeah. and the it's, more you give right. and, the, and yeah. the, what, what's funny is when we get down let's say more when we've in the past when when money seems to be getting tight you know, Anna's gotten. To, we we got to the point where she was counting pennies and nickels out of the out of my poker change that I had in this little jar. You know, that I used to take my money when I come home. I throw it in this jar. So all the loose change. That was what we we had. That was our food. You know, we we couldn't even afford to pay our mortgage. We couldn't pay our, our car payment. You know, different things like that. And then suddenly, they, but then they stopped sending us the mortgage. To, so they stopped. They said, they said, well, you don't have to pay it. Right? Pay us later. I'm like really. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's like God just, but, but even then, when we were down financially, you, you get to a point like of near death, then you see somebody on the street and you're saying, shoot, they have it worse than I have. And, and, yeah. and Anna's very good about reaching in her purse. And if she's only got a 20 in there, that might be our last 20. It goes to this person. She gives it to him. And then what's amazing is you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. Try it. The minute you give 20, he gives you 200. Yeah. You give 200, he gives you 2,000, 20,000. You know, I was uh, also yeah. like, when we were down with money, we, I remember we went to the store to buy some food and we had like really last money. And then it was this uh, lady sitting in front of the store with a child. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all of a sudden, Peter is taking her inside and he say, okay, you just, you just buy the food, you know? And I was amazed because I had to get, you know, over my fear that we don't gonna have it. Yeah. He spent all our last money on this lady. And somehow, <laughs> you know, it came back. Oh no, it came so back immediately. It's I don't know how, okay. I don't even remember, but it's like- No, what we happen, we come home that day, we open up a letter that was unopened and there's a $2,000 check from something I forgot that some company owed me money and they finally yeah. paid me back as, or, or they owed me money for work oh that's wonderful when i went back into the system like you went back in the system i did the same thing i was going to change the world change these therapists change the patients one by one and i i tried that you know what the system did they go well that's nice we like you to do that and then they wouldn't pay me i went almost a year without pay from during the call they called me and begged me to come and treat patients because nobody else would do it and i went and started treating them, and i realized none of these people have go all the people they YouTube gonna mind oh, your words. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna. Have to, I'm gonna have to bleep out co, co morbid. Okay, yeah. but anyways, yeah. but none of them they really had it. But do you know what the system does? They go, that's fine. Thank you very much. And then they wouldn't pay me. And then when yeah. you go and say you gotta pay me or the Department of Labor, I'm gonna call. So that was a lesson. And and that, they say go ahead and sue us. Sue us if you want. We don't care. As a matter of fact, we want you to sue us. They love that because they own the courts. You know, they, that's just another way of them. That, that's, that's just a lesson. That's just a lesson that, you know, a reminder as to why you shouldn't go back. And yeah. this is the beautiful thing about it, right? Is when you're on your path, yeah. you look for an easy route. You know, if you're, if you're brave and you give, even if you've not got yourself, if you give, you get looked after so phenomenally. As soon as you go, oh, I'm going to go back there because it's safe and it's secure. You know, God says, no. I'm going to make it so challenging for you. I'm going to remind you. I'm going to let them use you. I'm going to let you, them hurt you because you, you've got connected to this when it should be this. You know, yeah. it, 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 you know yeah, I, was I, a, I was a runner in, in 
in uh, in high school and college, I was track guy. And one of the events is called the hurdles. And you know, these challenges that we get are, are hurdles, you know, and you have three ways you can look at a hurdle like a bully, or you can just, you know, look at it as a hurdle. Um, you can jump over the hurdle and continue the race. You can go around the hurdle, but then you're eliminated from the race. You're, that, that, that hurdle, you've, you know, you're not going to deal with it. Or you, can, or you can give up and you can just lay there in front of the hurdle and wait for it to go away, which is not going to go away. Okay, so you can take it, take it, take this what the doctors tell you, take it. Okay, but when you go over the hurdle and you've overcome like you did, you know, when you walked away, you know, from the, the first time, if you decide to go back to the hurdle, God's going to say, well, free will, you want to keep going back? I'm going to keep re showing you these lessons trust me trust me i had the biggest it's really funny because i've just written this book this bit in my book so um i'm actually writing a book at the moment about my journey because it's been very very powerful very intuitively traveled the world to figure things out to find people like it's been amazing yeah, wait. i want a copy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well honestly you wait it, your your mind will be completely blown by it uh, honestly the guy that's helping me write it he's like wow are you sure this is your life and I'm like yeah you know this is the, everything that's happened it's amazing but what happened with me is I went back in October 2015 and I got comfortable I had boundaries in place but I was comfortable I was back earning a lot of money I was, you know, I had boundaries in place so that I started early, but I left at 5.30 p.m. every day because I was working on my own business. And I took a lunch break, which is unheard of in that kind of environment. And I'd been working, I'd been back a year, bearing in mind I said it, it will only be two years maximum. And my best friend died. Mm -hmm. Literally freak accident, my best friend got killed. And that was the kick up my backside that I had a year like less than a year 10 months till I till I promised myself that I was going to get out and that's not a lesson that I would wish on anybody no yeah you know, you know I, had, I had similar lesson and it kind of shake you out of this uh, yeah comfort zone like uh, she lost, she lost a, a couple people yeah but mm. you, you know I was I was going uh, into this with my Pilates studio into this positivity new age you know like ignoring the dark side completely because you know i and it helped me enormously to build my self-esteem to build my uh, self-love so i appreciate it but i refused to look at what what's really going wrong with the world you know so my best friend by the time uh, she got diagnosed with this uh, uh, blood about, cancer yeah. about michelle blood and bone cancer uh, but she went through all this medical system uh traumatic she she could heal herself with her with meditation with going uh, you know with with doing certain things but then she was pulled back into the system and being forced yeah. of doing chemo and all this because she she was in the system the family was pushing her that the work that she don't gonna get any benefits so i went through this dark journey with her passing and it shook me out and i had to look also at at the dark side you know that okay it's not like the fluff that you can look at the rainbows and ignore everything else not sparkles and unicorns is it <laughs> yeah this journey no. is not sparkles and unicorns at all is no. it <laughs> no. but it, you know that's why this like new age i call it new cage this was another cage that I was in. And like I say, I, I appreciate it. I, I, I love a lot of teaching, but there is like a certain things that you have to be aware of and you shouldn't ignore as well. So that's why I can relate so much with you getting out of, of certain things with them, like with this fi financial comfort, yeah. like you said, and, and, with the passing of your friend. Yeah. And one thing you also said that I caught that I don't know if, if but I think it's important to mention is you said you went back in and you were and then you were making a lot of money one of the things that people have to be aware of and careful of the system never gives anybody a lot of money unless you're doing what they want yeah okay so yeah. when you go back in you know if you you think oh i've figured it out i can go into the casino and i can i can win now they just sit back and laugh because they've got you back in 
See, they would rather control a lot of truthers like you and me and Charlie and all of these people and David, Nino Rodriguez and Nicholas Van Yemen. So if they can't change what you're saying, they'll control you by handing you this little tidbit. Like, hey, why don't you, yeah. why don't you stimulate, why don't you go and promote my product? And then you're back, now you're back in because now then you're doing their product and you're doing their product and they're giving you money. They're dumping money, millions of dollars. You've never seen such money. Okay, that's how they got you. And then, and, and once, and once they got you, okay, it's not that they That's they tell you. Excuse give me. Give up your dream. It's yeah. the price that they pay you to give up your dreams. Because they, now, when they, when they need it, they'll make that phone call and they'll say, "Okay, I can't have you talk, say this word on your videos, because if you say this word, it's going to hurt our ratings. So stop." And you know, and then you got people that are self censoring. You know, not being willing to say Jesus or not being willing to say comorbid or mentioning certain people's names that start with a T, you know, presidents. You can't say those words, you know. So it's a way of kind of directing you, hurting you without, without really, you, you don't even really know it. And that's what money will do. That's what, you know false money money uh, money has been the ultimate right it's been the ultimate control tactic for all of us for all of our lifetimes you know it's always been about money everybody has been controlled by money because if you haven't got it you need to work harder to get it if you have got it you know there's certain there's certain things along that side so fear, you know, money is, yeah yeah you know, money not, money, not is just money it's just they they luring you like when you start to break out of the system, they're going to bring something that's going to appear, appeal to you the most. Yeah, for some people can be money, for some people can be fame, for some people can be this like validation, like, oh, I feel like guru now, you know, because I'm bringing certain message and people start to adore me, yeah. you know, Adoration. and until you think you're going to be broken again, you know, because you're going to be put down by, you know, by some event that's going to happen. Oh, our lovely Hello. money life here. Yeah. We're, on, we're on, the, on a conference here real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Finish to wrap this up here. So my mother-in-law, his mother. My mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but like I say, oh, like you were, you were put back in this financial situation one more yeah. time, getting a lot of money. I was like in my Pilates studio, I was uh, going in this direction, this positivity, you know, I was admired by people and it, it, it you know, it feels good. Yeah, but that's when, the, also when the, that's when they come. Yeah, right? she, she, had, she had the Illuminati show up. She had yeah, mush and mobsters of, that say, we can make you world famous, yeah, all of a sudden, but I you got to sign this contract, soul contract. So, yeah. Yeah, she had it. And then every time, every step at the time, you have to make this decision again, you know, like, and sometimes, you know, some event gonna happen, like like it happened with our friends, that it's gonna shake you again into this, like, okay, I'm down again. You know, I'm down it, on it my doesn't mean we have to be afraid. Doesn't mean we have to be afraid. We have to be grateful for those things, right? We have to be grateful People for have, those things because they, they, they have saved us, you know? Our friends have their us. own journey. Our yeah. friends have our own journeys. You know, and, and God has their his time on the, each of these friends have their, but at the same time, we, we got to take these hard lessons and, and ask God, ask our higher spirit, you know, what are you trying to teach me here? I want to learn, not just, you know, be, yeah. be sad about it, but actually learn something from this. You know, my first wife was pregnant with our 10 month old child in her womb and she was taken. I was told she was in a car accident. I, I, I thought that for 25 years, and now I know. I've seen evidence that she was taken, satanic ritual sacrifice, and maybe the child was carved out of her. You know, so those traumas happened years ago, okay? And I'm just now learning the lessons of that. What was God trying to teach me there? What, what did, he didn't orchestrate the accident. But he uses the accident for our good. You know, he, when we are willing to look for that answer and say, now Why? tell me, what are you trying to tell me here? And he's still downloading that into me. You know, the lessons, there's a, an enormous amount of lesson that to be learned from the death of your friend. And you're still 
comprehending today. And the minute you think you comprehended that lesson, you're going to find another lesson that's going to pop up from your friend, Lucy, that you're going to still learn. Oh, okay. I chat to him all the time. He, he helps me constantly. So it's, it's yeah. like, you know, it's amazing. And, yeah. and, I, and I get it. I get it completely. And I'm so grateful to him because he, his passing saved me. I could have yeah. easily just stayed there for another year because interestingly they they extended my contract for another two years and offered me a massive 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 increase and I also got offered what would have been my dream job back in the day literally about four days before I before I finished completely and I and I had this massive battle of ego I was like oh my god it's everything that I would have loved and it's the money and it's the security or it's my passion and it's service to humanity yeah. and it was, yeah. it was what do I do but it was always going to be humanity because I, know, I, 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 I yeah and you know yeah. there's a thing about lessons with people's death that yeah. there's a, there's it's multi-layered that that you know we not to 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 diminish a, a human being but we have had people and animals, dogs, cats, dogs, especially in our life that have taken the hit for us. Yeah, now listen to this. They took the hit. That meant that that attack was meant for us, but they stood in the, in the gap. They decided your friend to say, you know, he might not have mentally done it, but spiritually he might have said, no, I'm taking this one out for Lucy. And he stood in the gap and took it for you so that what was was actually meant for you and so and 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 they can't come at you again with that because once they play a card they can't play it again but we've even had a dog that identified a witchcraft attack against us sit did the impossible thing this dog would never go on like a rocking chair and somebody dropped off a witchcraft book to curse our home and this dog is outside jumping up and down this bulldog english bulldog, english bulldog the... on a rocking yeah. chair he never even would get on a rocking chair let alone you know because he, he's not built for climbing up and down things but a month later he was like month later he's dead a month later he's dead yeah you know he took the hit he took that spiritual hit that was coming at us but you know we just have to recognize this divine uh spiritual journey for all those souls interacting together you know, we have some agreements. We, uh, you know, sometimes we, we just see it on the 3D level or somebody oh, died. And, most of the time we do. Yeah. This is like, it, it is so enormous. It's so huge, this, this, this soul journey for all of us, you know? And it's I'm just so open. Expected. Yeah. I just want to it's learn more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lucy, sorry. Yes. No, no, that's okay. I was just saying it's divinely orchestrated. It's so yes. beautiful. Yes. We're, we're all placed exactly where we need to be constantly. Exactly. And when you surrender to it, finally stop trying to orchestrate it. Stop trying to have your own yeah. ego-driven opinion about everything and just surrender. I love that that saying, you know, you want to make God surrender laugh. Surrender and life becomes very easy. Just yeah. literally let go of any attachment and all of a sudden yeah. everything becomes very easy. Yeah. yeah, it's a very common saying that if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, yes. you know, and, and it's so true that every time I try to plan something like even the going to Birmingham, the, you know, my plan was to meet Simon because we've always, you know, we love Simon, you know, and, and, and Charlie, and, and, well, I already met Charlie, but I wanted to see him again, actually meet him in person. And it was the minute you start to orchestrate your plans. You, you get frustrated because God has a plan for you, you know, and, and, and if you, but the minute you relax and say, okay, God, take it. Oh, then you're going to find out that not only are you going to get everything that you hoped for, but much, much more because God's plan is greater than you can possibly, even your in most remote okay. dreams dream of. Yeah. Totally, totally agree with you totally agree oh Sweet. it's been lovely to speak to you both can we plan on another one of these maybe uh, i'd really like to set yeah. up a oh i'd love to have a, like a maybe like maybe in a week or so i'll call, call you again and we can see how your schedule is just, just flop me a message yeah flop you a message i love that yeah that the english <laughs> flop me a message <laughs> <laughs> just send me a message and we can get things organized for sure um, yep so 
Yeah, right now, sorry about our, our studio here. Although I, I, I kind of like this, this outside thing. You know, we uh, we have um, construction. I came home and I and my wife decided she wanted to put flooring in the bedroom. Then one bedroom turned into three bedrooms, then three bedrooms turned into five bedrooms. And Cleaning it's like out the swamp, you know, the removing old carpets, you know, that's so metaphoric for me with the situation, you know, like you can clean it on the surface. It, you're never going to get it clean, you know. So drain the swamp. Somehow miraculously. <laughs> I wish I, could, I wish I could drain that swamp of that belly fat around my belly, but I it's uh, not out yet. But all my medical yeah, experience. Yeah, go to fasting, you know. It's oh, gonna... no. <laughs> oh, bless you. Well, it's lovely to speak oh, to you both. Um, I look forward to speaking to you again super soon. All right. No, yeah, all right. And if you if you do release this on uh, any platforms, please send us a text on where so we can find it to ourselves because. We love to do that and then reshare those again and with our friends. You know? Lucy, please uh, share your links also for your programs, you know, because people who listen on oh, our yeah. platform, you know, uh, it, it would be, yeah. you know. Do you have an email? We, we, we you, all need a little boost, Can you, can you, you know? e email me? You have my email, right? What, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I don't think I've got your email. I'll just text you because that's how we've been speaking, isn't it, on text. Yeah. I'll text you my details. If you send me your details, and then I can put yours on my video and you can put mine on your video and then we're good. Yeah. So your, do you have a title yet for your book? I do, but I haven't shared it yet, so I'm not going to share oh, it. Okay. Well, you, you <laughs> know, the, only good, the reason being is uh, as a published author, I've published, author, you know, and I've, I've also writing a book about this uh, event that happened by just by telling people you know you as you start to describe your story okay you know and you're going to write about it or you are writing about it you know you are to a degree <laughs> you're already you're already disclosing things you know but when you say once you say things on like um like my book that's getting ready to come out is called the hunted becomes the hunter okay i've shared that now with the world okay so it stops people from going out and writing the same book and saying i'm the one who did well no one could ever write this book nobody could ever write this book honestly, <laughs> honestly yeah. there is no, not I, I, one I other person don't be afraid of sharing book. the title you know if you're planning on doing it because that's not like somebody can steal that title once you put it out there in space at a, and it's trust time me. stamp no. you know, <laughs> yep Trust me, trust me, nobody, nobody will be writing a book with this title and nobody will ever be talking about what I, what's going in it. I promise you, I absolutely right. promise you. And it, it, it will be going out in the, like the name will be going out in the public domain very, very soon, but it's, it's already out there. It's just, I haven't spoken it, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. All right. Good. All for a reason. All for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Everything for a reason. Yeah, really for a reason. <laughs> exactly. That there is a master plan. Apparently, I don't know. I just tap it up there and they tell me what I'm doing. So, um, yeah. and I trust yeah. that completely. Well, so, yeah. you know. Well, what, what's the name of your website? So people can find you, uh, just view verbalized if you don't mind me uh saying that yeah it's www.lucydavis.com actually yeah. just my name lucy davis that's it.com um but i'll send you the links over so you can pop them below and, I'll yeah. yours and below. we have yeah. on ours we just oh, our our new website that we just opened is, is drpetercola.com www.drpetercola.com and that that also has links to a lot of books and all of the projects that we're working on and all the different things so and of, and of course also access to these videos so and they're it's all free you know i i don't you know even my books i put a pdf copy so people you know if they can't afford to buy it great just download it and read it if you feel like it you know this is right Perfect. Good. Sounds good. Can't I will to speak to you, again. beautiful soul. All right. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit end here. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Bye, bye, sweetie. Lots bye -bye. of love. Bye, bye, -bye. guys. Take bye -bye. care. Bye, -bye. bye, -bye.